are you preparing for this year chemistry examination? I mean, why? Neko jam, either GC or internal. This video is for you. This video is for you. Make sure you watch this video till the end because I'm going to be showing you the secret to have A1 in that chemistry without examination my practice. Relax, I'll be right back. You know, in the last um, episode, I was sharing with us uh, how to prepare for exam. I was sharing with us how to prepare for exam. Now today, I want to share with us 10 most repeated topics in both NECO and WAEG chemistry examination. So let's go. Now in SS1, one of the topics that you must read and read very well is mixture and compound. Now when you read mixture, what are those things you need to you know, take note about mixture? You need to take notes of examples of mixtures that we have. Of course, the question might not ask you to define mixture, but examples of mixtures that we have, number one. Then how do we separate these mixtures? That's separation techniques. The method of separation. Why can Neko do us um, questions on uh, the physical properties that ensures the separation techniques that we are using? Let me give you an instance. If you are using um, simple distillation as a separation technique to separate a mixture, most especially maybe ethanol and water. Now, why do you use or why do we use a uh, simple distillation to separate? the mixture of the uh, ethanol and water. Now, and that is the physical property that the question is asking from you. The physical properties that that question is asking from you is wide boiling point. Wide boiling point. So when we talk about fractional distillation, that one is close boiling point. So I've mentioned two topics now. Separation techniques, all the separation techniques that we have, and then mixture. Why is here classified as mixture? One, it doesn't have chemical formula. Two, its component can be separated by a physical mean, which is called fractional distillation. Another topic in SS1 that you must master very well is gas laws. Gas laws, all these boys' laws, Charles laws, Avogadro's law, Graham's law. You must be able to state those laws correctly number one. The number two is that uh, the mathematical uh, application or the mathematical expression of this law, you must ensure that you master them very well. Do you get that now? Now, that is another topic that you must master for your SS1. Now, I have mentioned three now. Four, stoichiometry. This stoichiometry is a little bit, um, you know, voluminous and it's very interesting. What are those things that you need to learn in stoichiometry? Number one, how to balance chemical equations. Set to that. Learn how to balance chemical equation. After that, on that stoichiometry, that's when we have more concepts. How uh, you know this more concept you can divide it in with different parameters. You can divide more in concept of mass, you can divide more in concept of volume, more concept. How to calculate more with chemical equation? How to calculate more with formula? Like the formula for calculating, we have so many formulas for calculating more. One of the formula for calculating more is uh, more is equal to mass over molar mass. That's one formula. And then you can actually use it, um, you can solve more with a uh, chemical equation. Learn more, learn more concepts, learn stoichiometry, balancing of chemical equation those are the topics that, that are very common in ss1 ss2 topics that you must master very well number one on the list is periodic table periodic table now under that periodic table uh, you learn modern periodic law that law modern periodic law we state that 
the properties of elements are a periodic function of what? Of their atomic number. So you must learn uh, modern, read modern periodic law one, then two properties of element and their trend. Ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, and their trend, atomic radius. You learn those um, properties, then they are trained both across the period and down the group. Those are those things you need to learn under periodic table. The group element and then the period and uh, the periodic element. When we talk about group element, element is the same. What is common to all of them? They have the same valency. Element in the same group have the same what? The same valence electron. Why element in the same period? Element in the same period have the same number of electronic shell. Those are those things you need to learn on that periodic table. And then writing of electronic configuration using SPDF notation. It is very, very important. Writing of what? Uh, electronic configuration using SPDF notation. You know, uh, like say S orbital, we have S orbital, we have B orbital, we have D orbital, we have F orbital. S orbital can accommodate two electrons maximum. P orbital can accommodate maximum of six electrons. D orbitals can accommodate maximum of ten electrons, and F orbitals can accommodate maximum of fourteen electrons. Ah, maximum of fourteen electrons. And what are the laws? of writing electronic configuration you know we have about three laws Pauli exclusion principle number one that's one of the laws another law for writing um uh electronic configuration we have alphabet principle and then the last law there is Ohm's rule now you know, we're discussing about periodic table, and I said those things you need to master in periodic table, you need to master the definition, you need to master, I mean, the, the modern, modern periodic law, and then writing of electronic configuration. Then, you know, um, there are rules that govern writing of this electronic configuration. We have three, three laws. We have three laws or three rules that governs writing of electronic configuration. One of it is alphabet principle. Another one is Pauli exclusion principle. Another one is a Ohm's rule. So these three laws must ensure that you master them very well. Do you get it now? You must ensure you master those rules very well. Now, to the next topic, you need to, to read. The next topic is what electrolysis electrolysis this electrolysis is very very important you must ensure you read this topic very well and what are those you need to read in electrolysis number one definition of electrolysis another thing you need to study about electrolysis is a um, uh, electrochemical series that is arrangement of elements according to their reactivities or according to their uh, power I mean electropositivity and then electronegativity. Another thing you need to study under this electrolysis is a um, uh, Faraday law of electrolysis. You now we have first Faraday and then the second Faraday. Then the applications of both uh, the first law and the second law. Most especially how to write um, ionic equation for every element being discharged at the cathode and, and the anode. Now, let, let me give you, uh, let me say uh, a shortcut to this. There's something called cryo. See how a hole, I repeat, cryo, CR, a O. that C represents cathode. At the cathode is reduction. That AO represents anode and oxidation. So at the anode is oxidation, at the cathode is reduction. Do you get it now? At the cathode, it is reduction. At the anode, it is oxidation. So you need to know, you need to learn how to you know, write uh, ionic equation for both the cathode and the anode of the electrolysis. Uh, 
I'm still going to release video on how to calculate I mean applications of Faraday law of electrolysis. Watch out for that one. Applications of Faraday's law of electrolysis because we are going to come across questions that involves the applications of the uh, Faraday law of uh, electrolysis. Okay, now the one that is very close to that electrolysis is redox reaction. Redox reaction. You must read redox reaction, my, my dear student. Read redox reaction, and this redox reaction is very simple. Most, uh, most especially the aspect of definitions of oxidation and reduction in terms of electron transfer, definitions of oxidizing and redu uh, oxidizing agent and reducing agent in terms of electron transfer. Take for instance, oxidizing agent and electron acceptor. Oxidizing agent are what? They are electron acceptor. Why? Reducing agent are electron donor. It means that any oxidizing agent, you are going to be adding electron at the reactant side. Any reducing agent, you are going to be adding uh, electron at the product side. And that's why we say, uh, that's why uh, we define reducing agent as electron acceptor and oxidizing agent as electron, um, oxidizing agent as electron acceptor and then reducing agent as electron donor. Then how to write and balance redox reaction? It is very very important. How to write? You may not even need how to write, but make sure you master how to balance a redox reaction. Do you get that now? Then the next one is a chemical equilibrium. <laughs> and this topic are not hard. -o. Chemical equilibrium. You just have to apply your art. You need to apply your intelligence. You need to relate it with things that are physical. Hmm? Chemical equilibrium. And most importantly, most importantly, on this chemical equilibrium, factors that affect a system in equilibrium. And don't forget, the Jatelia's principle. We state that when a system is in equilibrium, and one of the factors that affect the position of equilibrium is altered. What are those uh, factors that can affect the position of equilibrium, like change in concentration, like change in temperature? If any of those factors is altered, it means the equilibrium to shift. Eh? Make the world to shift in order to neutralize the effect. It's like if somebody is sitting properly and you are okay, you are sitting properly. And then something just happened all of a sudden that um, maybe something happened to that seat. And then the seat tried to shake. What happened to you? You two are going to shake alongside. That is what Le Chatelias is saying. That by the time you were sitting very well on the seat, you are at equilibrium. But mainly something happened. You quickly shift so that uh, or you shake so that uh, you get balance. And that's what Le Chatelia is trying to explain but this time around it is in chemical system it's a chemical system so factors affecting a system in in, uh, in equilibrium like change in temperature change in concentration change in pressure do you get this now actually pressure only affect a, a gaseous system pressure will affect a gaseous system pressure will not affect system that are, that are solid it will only affect a system that contain uh, maybe a uh, gaseous particle, gaseous element. Do you get that now? Then the next one is solubility. Solubility. Learn or read solubility. And this solubility is so simple. Solubility, when you are reading on solubility, you can uh, try and read more on um, uh, molarity because when you are doing this solubility period of a thing, the formula that we use in calculating solubility is similar to, or well, let me just say, it's even the same to the formula you use in calculating your molarity, which we know as a concentration, molar concentration, which is in gram per uh, mass concentration over uh, molar mass. Do you get it now? So it's the same formula, just need to learn how to apply those uh, formulas. 
Do you understand that now? Now, the last one on my list, the last one on my list here is organic chemistry. Eh? Organic chemistry. Read organic chemistry, my dear. Oh, read organic chemistry. Those things you need to learn on organic chemistry. Number one is how you pack nomenclature. Don't even trade it at all. How you pack nomenclature. You must learn how you pack nomenclature. Eh? You must learn how you pack nomenclature. Do you get your, what are those you need to learn on how you pack nomenclature? How to, number one, how to draw the structure of an homologous and how to give it name. Learn it is not hard at all. Learn how to write uh, the structure and how to give name to any organic compound. And it is very simple. If you want to learn that, number one thing you need to do is to identify the functional group of all the homologous series that we have identify their functional group when you know their functional group you'll be able to determine the family that that uh, compound belongs to with the help of the functional group then number two things on that uh, organic chemistry you know we have like organic chemistry is divided into three parts we have the hydrocarbon part and then we have uh, the carbohydrate part you need to learn all these things homologous series definition of homologous series characteristics of homologous series and then chemical properties of all the homologous series that we have. Reading all these topics I've mentioned, I'm telling you, A1 is very sure. A1 is very certain without any examination my practice. And if you need any question on any of the topics I have mentioned, my line will be displayed on the screen. Make sure you call or you subscribe to um, Pleasant Chemistry. I'll be I'm going to release videos that touches all these topics I have mentioned, and I wish you success in that exam. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Bye.